I have nothing to disclose. Okay. So what's lipedema? Lipedema, as you all know, is a very painful fat disorder that was first described in 1940 by doctors Allens and Hines, where he said that lipedema tissue permits edema to occur. It usually affects approximately 10% of, of adult women worldwide, and it's usually characterized by disproportion of fat on the lower body compared to the trunk, and as you know, arms are also affected in 80% of subjects. It begins at puberty or at time of hormonal flux. Uh, fibrosis and lymphedema are usually complications of lipedema. So, unfortunately, lipedema is, often, is so often confused with obesity. However, there is major differences between these two conditions. Okay, so first, by skin texture, in obese people, you can see that skin is, ranges from normal to thick. However, in lipedema ladies, you have the skin that range that will be either normal, velvety, soft, or thin. Both have fibrotic tissue and large fat cells. However, in obesity, we have higher percentage of diabetes and lipedema we have low, but the most important thing is that the fat responsive to diet and exercise in lipedema is very low compared to obesity. So the main objective of our project, sorry, the main objective of our project was to study the blood vessels and immune cells in lipedema skin and fat under the microscope and compare them to control subjects. For this purpose, we have enrolled in our study 38 participants, including 16 healthy controls and 22 lipedema ladies. And we divided them into two groups, non-obese group based on their BMI, non-obese group with BMI of 20, 20 to 30, and obese group with BMI 30 to 40. Okay, to start with, this is a microscopic slide showing the skin of the skin from the thigh of a control subject. And as you can see here, the skin has two layers, the upper layer, which we call the epidermis, and the lower layer, which we call the dermis. So this is the upper layer, and under it, you have the dermis. And the dermis is, again, subdivided into two layers. The first one is called the papillar layer, and the lower one is called the reticular layer. And you can also see here the small rounded circles with red dots inside them, these are called the blood vessels, and here the large white area is called the lymphatic vessel. So this is what we usually see in a normal subject. And we usually don't see okay, any blood, sorry, any blood vessels that they do extend into the upper layer of the epidermis. We only see this one in cirrhosis in the skin. We can see the larger blood vessels extending through the epidermis. And this is what you also, we don't see it in lipedema. However, in lipedema, we see different location of blood vessels in the skin. And please note here that you have the, these blood vessels that are extending into the epidermis. And for this reason, we divided the papillary dermis into two layers, the upper layer and the lower layer. In the upper layer, you can see these small blood vessels with a special stain that we did, which is called SMA, which is, uh, is a marker for blood vessels. And we, then we counted. Okay. And the, when we counted these blood vessels, we found that we have increased, significant increase in blood vessels in our both groups, non-obese and obese lipedema ladies compared to control. And while we were counting blood vessels, sorry. and while we were counting the blood vessels in these lipedema tissues, we observed that the skin, which is that the second layer of the skin, is full with immune cells. So we got interested to see what type of cells that they are infiltrating the dermis. And for this, we did special stains, and we figured out that these cells are all immune cells. They include the T lymphocytes, which you can see they are indicated with this white arrow as the brown dots in the skin. And the white blood cells, these T lymphocytes, that they are important in defense of the immune system. We also notice macrophages, 
which are important in engulfing and digesting viruses and bacteria, and mast cells, which usually important in allergy and releases histamine on, once it's activated. So our next step was to quantify the number of immune cells in the skin, and here we have shown that macrophages increase significantly in both of our lipedema groups, non-obese and obese groups compared to controls. Mast cells increased only in our obese lipedema groups compared to controls. However, T lymphocytes were similar in both the groups as compared to controls. And this is only a picture to show you how increase in blood vessels from here, here, here is correlated with increase in immune cells. And actually, this is what we have seen in our data, where we have seen an increase in macrophages and mast cells positively correlate with increase in, non in blood vessels in our non-obese lipedema group compared to controls. But there was no correlation in our obese group because obesity in general complicates the data. So all this data that I've shown you, there was in the skin. So, but what's really happening in the fat tissue? Here is a microscopic slide showing the fat in the thigh of a controlled participant. And you can see here these, the fat cells are these like round circles, round white circles. And you can see that between the fat cells here is more clear, there's tiny blood vessels that are called capillaries which Dr. Herbs have talked about it in the morning. And our, however, in our lipedema ladies, what we see is we have seen different sizes of lipedema, oh, oh, sorry, of fat cells that ranges from big to very small. And we have seen also increase in the number of these tiny blood vessels and also increase in size of these blood vessels, which we call, refer to it as dilation of capillaries. So we quantified these capillaries and we measured their size and we observed that we have significant increase in size in capillaries in lipedema lazy ladies, both in non-obese and obese groups. However, it was significant in our non-obese group, but we lost the significance in obese group because some of the ladies have really very large capillaries. So, then this slide that I'm showing you, it's a very exciting slide for us. It has very exciting data. And again, I'm showing you the fat from the control subjects and lipedema, uh, fat from lipedema ladies. But look here. We got many samples of lipedema ladies that they have their fat uh, cells surrounded by these multiple, if you can see the multiple small blood vessels around one fat cell, and you can also observe this is small blood, uh, small fat cells. In addition to this, you can see a very wide space between fat cells and also a small blood vessel that's growing in this area. So this white, uh, white space between fat cells, which Dr. Herbst talked about, sorry, is the new organ that's now referring to the interstitium. And we believe that in the interstitium we have a fluid, we have fibrosis, and we have connective tissue. So what's exciting about this is that the increased number of blood vessels is referred to angiogenesis. And in our subjects, uh, we have shown that we have 35% of our lipedema ladies have evidence of angiogenesis in their hypodermis. So our next step was to characterize these lipedema ladies with angiogenesis. How we did characterize them? First, we looked for the number of blood vessels around the fat cells. If you can see here, there is multiple blood vessels, and here they are circulating a fat cells. You can see very really small fat cells in the area attached to the blood vessels you can see increase in interstitium in here and in here, and you also see immune cells around a fat cell. In addition, you can also see dilated capillaries and deflated or shrunken adipocytes. So in, in conclusion, what we have 
learned from this and what Dr. Herbst um, talked about in the morning that lipedema ladies have hypermobility which is which result in tissue compliances and this now the tissue is more welcoming to fluid and fat and this results in increase in the size of the fat cells which leads also to hypoxic condition which is the decrease in oxygen level that triggers formation of new blood vessels which is referred as angiogenesis and we have data showing that we have increase in VHEF that supports angiogenesis. And again, angiogenesis is inducing inflammation that we have showed by the increase of immune cells, mast cells. And on the other hand, also inflammation induces more vascular changes that triggers increase in blood vessels and lymph, and finally, and end up by fibrosis. So since our aim is to treat these lipedema ladies, so I think, or we think, that developing inhibitors for angiogenesis, in addition to the current treatment, developing inhibitors of inflammatory mediators is very important, and as well as developing inhibitors for fibrosis. Okay. <laughs> okay, finally, I would like to thank the treaty program, especially Dr. Herbs, Chris, and my student, Marisol. I would like to thank also TACMAS and San Diego Pathology for their services. And I would like to thank the Pedema Foundation for funding our project. And thank you all for listening. Okay.